guys, I'm Audrey. I am um, going to be teaching the lesson for Sparks tonight. Um, I don't normally teach the lesson, so you'll have to excuse me. But tonight we're going to be learning about something from the Old Testament, and the lesson is going to be over deceit. So for those that don't know, deceit just means lying or trickery or just kind of like manipulating. And this can be found in Genesis 25. So we're learning about two siblings. Now I know most of you probably have a brother or a sister, whether they're older or younger, and you understand sibling rivalry. So that just means arguing with your siblings or something. But these siblings were named Jacob and Esau. So who remembers um, Abraham and his son Isaac? If you do, this is Isaac's two sons, Jacob and Esau. So we're going to learn about their story. Jacob was the younger sibling, and um, Esau was the older one. And Esau really liked to go out and hunt and uh, just, like, camp and be away from the house. I'm sure he went down to the river like we do here in the summers. And Jacob just really liked to stay home, and he liked to cook and help out around the camps and everything. So Jacob, being the younger one, he did not like that he was the younger sibling. He wanted everything that was promised to Esau. So since Esau was the older one, he had the birthright, which birthright just means that he was going to inherit his father's land and his home and um, everything that he owned. And he also was going to get his father's blessing. And so what that means is that he would just get God's favor. Well, Jacob did not like any of that, so he tricked his brother twice. He tricked him out of his birthright and out of his blessing. So the first trick that he does, or the first deceit that he does, is whenever Esau was gone hunting, and he came back some days later, he was starving. And Jacob was like, okay, I'm only going to cook for you if you give me your birthright. And Esau was just like, whatever, I don't care, give me some soup, I'm starving. And so that was the first time he tricked him. Later, Esau, he, he didn't realize what had just happened. And he was like, oh, man, I cannot believe I just did that. And he was upset. Well, then it doesn't stop there. Another time, Isaac. So Isaac, at this point, he's very old, very, very old. Whenever we were first introduced to him, he was young. And his dad was taking him up on a mountain. We won't get into that right now. But um, Esau's, or, yeah. Who am I talking about? Isaac. Isaac is very old now, and he's blind, and he's sick, and he's laying on a bed. And he tells Esau, Esau, I'm ready to give you your blessing. Go out and kill something to make a stew. But while he was gone, Jacob and his mom, Rebecca, were like, okay, we're going to get this blessing. We're going to trick Esau and Isaac, and we're going to get the blessing. So Esau, he was really, like, burly and muscly, and he was hairy, and he had hair all over him. So since Jacob, he was smaller frame, and he was not hairy, put on, like, a lot of clothing and then taped animal skin and their fur to his arms so that... Isaac would think he was Esau when he felt of his hands and his arms. So he goes in there and he goes, Father, I'm back. I'm, I'm ready for my blessing. Like, here's your stew. And so then Isaac gives Jacob the blessing. Well, Esau comes back and he is mad. He is so upset. He cannot believe that Jacob tricked him again. Now he no longer has his birthright. But he no longer has his blessing, his favor from God either. So... Do you think Esau was like, okay, Jacob, that's okay, I forgive you? Or do you think he was like, Jacob, it's fight time. Like, you better run or it's going down. He was very mad. He was very upset. And he told Jacob that as soon as their dad, Isaac, died, that he was going to come for him and hurt him. So Rebecca, Jacob's mom, was like, yo, you got to get out of town because Esau's coming for you. So Jacob had to run off and go live with a family member that lived far away. So he worked so hard to manipulate his brother and to lie to his family, and now he's left with nothing. He had to run away from his home. He doesn't even have his own family anymore. Do you think 
Jacob was very happy with his decisions, or do you think he regretted it? He regretted it. In the end, he realized, man, that was not okay. Like, yeah, I might have gotten this birthright and this blessing, but I don't even get to enjoy it because now I have to run in fear that my brother is going to hurt me. And I just made my whole family upset. He disappointed his dad and his brother. Okay, so at some point in our life, we're all have, we're all like Jacob. We manipulate people, we lie, and we trick them. And I think at some point we all feel like Jacob did at the end, where he regretted it and he was upset with his decisions and sad that he had disappointed his dad and his brother. And then he had to go, he didn't even get to enjoy any of it. I know that at any time, because adults do it too, adults can lie and manipulate and deceive too. I know any time that I do something wrong like that, I regret it and I don't enjoy my, my cries out of it, what I got out of it. And I know that this, how you guys can relate to this is, say your parents tell you not to take your younger siblings candy or their toy, but as soon as they're out of the room, you go and you take it, or you fight with them whenever you're told not to. That's lying. Or your parents say that you can go outside and play as long as you don't leave the yard, yard, and you promise that you will not leave the yard. But then you're out there playing for a while, and you find yourself down the road at the neighbor's house. You know, it's not it's not okay to lie, and it always ends up hurting someone and ourselves usually. But thankfully, there is a fail safe that God sent for us, and His name is Jesus. And what that means is that any time that we mess up, any time that we fall short, we can just say, God, Jesus, I'm so sorry, you know, please forgive me. And we, once we ask him into our heart and into our lives, we have that, where he will always forgive us and we can always work to be better, to strive to be more like Jesus and to quit lying. And we just have to work on seeking him always, right? So my challenge to you guys is to think about a time that you've ever cheated or you've lied or you've manipulated, whether it's your parents, your friends, or your siblings. And then think about how you felt at the end, because I'm sure you got caught. Everybody ends up getting caught in the end. It's not worth it, is it, to get in trouble after we go through all that work to manipulate someone. It's not worth it because we don't get what we really wanted out of it. So my challenge to you guys is the next time that you feel like you're going to do that, you're going to lie, or you're going to cheat, or you're going to manipulate someone, to stop and think, okay, no, I'm going to go about this the right way. I'm going to ask Jesus to help me to make the right steps. And I'm going to be honest and truthful. And parents, I also challenge you to read this full story with your family. So this can be found in Genesis um, 27. So I challenge you guys this week to sit down, read a couple verses a night, read the whole chapter in one night, whatever suits you, and we can't wait to see you guys again. Have a good week.